Welcome to this last unit on computer science. I decided to look at 10 hot topics in computer science. Let me start with something I'm very excited about, which I'm doing all the time, experiments with mathematics. It's very nice. You don't need a big lab. You, have, uh, you can take a computer and you can play with, with stuff. I'm pretty sure I'm doing more experiments than some of the physicists here just in the, in the neighboring building who look at string theories and all kinds of things. It's very exciting to look at basic things and one of the things I'm actually running on this machine since five years there's something about prime numbers. So this is a question of uh, Hardy and Littlewood who have wondered about the ratio between primes of the form n squared plus one and primes of the form 4n plus one. The ratio seems to converge to a number which uh, Hardy and Little would already have computed. But the amazing thing is we don't even know whether there are infinitely many primes of the form n squared plus one. So it's nice to investigate this and also to see how far we can push this. There are many books about this already. It's kind of a field of mathematics by itself. So the computer is your microscope, is your telescope, and you can you can look into the world of numbers or the world of structures like graphs. Topic number two is artificial intelligence. It's very hot. Uh, again, there has been a development in the 60s and then it, there was a winter of AI winter, but it has come back, especially since since uh, companies have actually started to mine this. For example, there is Alexa. Alexa, what is 7 plus 12? <clears throat> 7 plus 12 is 19. Alexa, differentiate cotangent of x. <clears throat> Here's something I found on the web. Hey Siri, differentiate cotangent of x. <clears throat> One sec, I find an answer. It's displayed on your iPhone. So it doesn't actually speak speak it, but it actually has just computed it here. Hey Siri, what is the weather today? <clears throat> it's currently clear, 21 degrees. Hey Alexa, what is the weather today? <clears throat> right now in Arlington, it's 69 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly sunny skies. Okay, topic number three are algorithms. Algorithms and data structures, that's something very basic in computer science. And it's also very, very mathematical. So an algorithm computes, for example, the number of complete subgraphs in a, in a given graph. I once designed an algorithm here, which is very short. It's recursive. It uh, computes all the uh, numbers of uh, complete subgraphs in a, in a recursive way. This is, this is very costly, we don't know, and we will come to this, this is a hard problem. It's actually NP-hard problem. It's something which uh, I, ex I can explain here what an algorithm is. Other examples of algorithms are sorting problems, matching problems, and inverse problems. We come to this, it's so important, I will look at, we will look at that. That was number three. Number four is about the limit of computing. It's an amazing fact that we are just in principle not able to compute everything. And an example of a task which we cannot do, we cannot build a machine which decides about this specific machine whether it halts or not. So we build, we build a machine which, which takes as an input a, a, a machine. If the machine which we take halts, we run, the, we, we, we continue, we produce a loop, we go back and produce the same thing and otherwise we halt. So if the machine X halts, if this machine here halts, then it doesn't halt and uh, uh, if it doesn't halt, it will halt. So the point is, uh, one of the genius ideas of Turing is to treat machines as objects we can also deal with. A machine is a procedure which takes an input and gives an output and uh, a particular machine either halts or not. It produces an output or it just runs forever. So that's uh, about the limit of computing, which is very much also related to logic, about Gödel's incompleteness, and uh, kind of an easy version of Gödel's, Gödel's incompleteness theorem is really kind of also uh, given in that, in that decision problem. These are decision problems. <clears throat> Topic number five is about the complexity to compute things. If you have a task, like to compute the determinant of an n times n matrix. And there are thousands of linear algebra books which tell you how to do that with row reduction that can be done in polynomial time. 
P, so it's in, in the class P, there are, uh, if, you, if, you, if you take the definition of the determinant, but you don't take the signs, you just take everything, the sum over all permutations of uh, matrix elements, then you get uh, a problem which we don't know how fast we can compute it. The fastest way we can compute it is uh, non-polynomial, it's exponential. <clears throat> So this is a complexity problem. Major problem of uh, computer science is whether p is equal to np, whether polynomial problems are the same than non-deterministic polynomial problems, problems you can check in polynomial time. So an example of such a problem is to find the largest complete subgraph in a graph. That's an np-complete problem. And then complexity theory also reduces other problems to these problems. So if something is, can be reduced to this in polynomial time, then it's also NP-complete. <clears throat> Many of these problems appear in network theory. <clears throat> the next thing is about uh, <coughs> data structures and especially also programming languages which deal with uh, uh, data structures. So I myself, when I started to, <coughs> to work with uh, programs, I was had something like that, uh, TI-57, you can program with that like in an assembler type language. You can still emulate that. Maybe I'll show you the em em emulator of this uh, TI-57. These are programming languages I've extensively programmed in, and uh, it's just amazing how rich, how nice their graph databases, which actually the Kipu database was already kind of a, an early graph database, and nowadays we have uh, lots of different choices, relational databases for example. Inverse problem, that's a very, very core problem in mathematical physics especially. So you have some data, you see some data and you want to compute things. I myself, my students have worked on computer vision, especially panoramic vision. We have worked with this camera which produces 360 degree. This is also a camera, 360 degree camera. This is a 360 degree camera. And uh, so when you have a 360 degree picture, it's kind of mathematical nice also to look at mathematical problem, like you have endpoints in space, you don't know where they are, and you see them, you photograph them from the camera, so this means you have endpoints in your, on your sphere, and from this information, you don't, know, you, you don't know how the camera is oriented or anything, where it is, from this information, you want to construct the scene, uh, the points and the camera. So this is called the structure from motion problem. It's an example of an inverse problem. This is a 3D scanner which you go around an object and then it, it scans it in. Actually, I forgot to mention in the case of data structures that these data structures, uh, and actually this was early, in the earlier case, data structures were very physical. So for example, that's a, 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 a way how uh, music, in, music was uh, uh, stored a while ago. So you had this, uh, so you have this wheel with the, with, the, with the nails on it. And uh, uh, so this stores all the information. So this is kind of like a database. Uh, the next thing is computer vision. Robots have to be able to understand the surrounding. They have to see whether an obstacle is, is there or not to figure out uh, features, especially OCR. I, 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 I spent once a summer to write an OCR program. It's very, very uh, interesting, so actually very, exciting that exciting sub problems like you know where are the lines with if the text is slanted like that you have first to uh, adjust it then you have to find the, the the letters and that can be tricky because some letters are you know uh, actually taking over it's not just rectangular uh, parts so they take over parts where where other letters are and so it's it's, it's quite an exciting problem <clears throat> kind of one of the goals which is not yet achieved is if i would take a book like that I scan it, scan it in, and it would produce me a LaTeX uh, file uh, which generates this book back. So these books are usually written nowadays in LaTeX, and also the figures and everything would be generated automatically. Also the formulas, mathematical formulas, that's also a problem which is not yet well solved at all. Alexa, tell me a joke. Did you hear about the crash test dummy who joined the ballet? I call that a mannequin dance. About network structures, this is a topic I'm working mostly in. It's very, very interesting. And uh, so there are tasks which are just hard. <clears throat> so if you have a network and uh, the task is in that network, in that street network, to find the shortest connections from two points, from one point to the other. If there are some weights, costs, like length, which, which you have. This is a very basic problem, but it's actually a hard problem. 
And uh, there are other examples of hard problems, like how many colors do you need to color a, a, a graph uh, so that the JSON nodes have different colors. And finally, uh, I want to kind of go through a couple of computers. Maybe the first one is the Antiqui Antiquitera uh, mechanism, mechanically. So it's kind of maybe the first. It's also the measuring of time is actually kind of some sense a computer and it's very important for measuring distances, measuring distances with various devices. You can also do it with your phone. There are apps which allow you to uh, compute uh, uh, distances. And of course there is the Abacus, which is a computing device which uh, some date back to 2700 BC, but the Chinese Abacus like this one is kind of 200, 200 BC. So that's a, a, a very exciting device. And uh, then there's slide rule. Unfortunately, I have the slide rule. My slide rule for my grandfather is at home. The Schickard computer, the Pascal computer. Maybe I show pictures. The Leibniz computer. Pascal Leibniz were mathematicians. It's kind of amazing. The difference engine. Zuse, which is a, a kind of an interesting, which is an interesting machine. Maybe a little bit later came Mark I, which is still downstairs. It's actually going away to Alston soon, uh, Mark I. Then there's Colossus, ENIAC at IBM. We are living in a very exciting time because these computers, these were old computers I had myself. They don't work anymore because the batteries are down, but maybe 10 years old, we have, this, uh, we have these devices where we can write nicely and easily. We have also phones, which are very, very powerful which can do a lot of, lot, lots of different things. Then we have, uh, we have, we have, we have, we have watch uh, which can compute. It's an amazing arc from uh, this ancient machine, the Ant Antiquitera, to the Apple Watch. So let's stop this here. <clears throat>